Now for the Christophers, please welcome best-selling author and TV commentator, Father Jonathan Morris. So on behalf of the Christopher staff and the Board of Directors, uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the 69th annual Christopher, 69th annual Christopher Awards. We always begin these ceremonies with a prayer that reflects the mission of the Christopher Awards. Regardless of your faith or tradition, I bring these, I hope, and I pray that these words will ring true. So we begin with this prayer, so I invite you to either bow your heads or whatever helps you to connect with God. Lord, you call us to reflect your goodness and light to the people we encounter every day, family, friends, coworkers, and strangers. The creative artists we honor tonight live that mission in a special way because their work reaches a wide number of people with messages of service, sacrifice, healing, and humor. Bless these artists that we honor tonight with continued wisdom and understanding and encourage them always to keep sharing their gifts with the world. We ask this in your loving name. Amen. So tonight we are pleased to welcome um, a New York television legend as our master of ceremonies. Uh, Ernie Anastas, where is Ernie? <laughs> Where'd he go? Oh, Ernie! I, I didn't see you come in. Ernie Anastas celebrates more than three decades as a top news anchor at ABC7 and CBS2, and he's currently watched by millions of New Yorkers, including myself, every night at 6 o'clock on Fox 5. Ernie is a Hall of Fame broadcaster who has won more than 30 Emmy Awards and nominations for his outstanding contributions to television journalism, including the prestigious Lifetime Emmy Award. And in 2016, he received the Christopher Life Achievement Award. Ernie has authored a series of children's books. He devotes his time to numerous charities, and he has been honored by the City of New York with an official mayoral proclamation marking March 21st as, imagine this, I don't know what you do on March 21st, Ernie, but on March 21st is Ernie Anastas Day for his distinguished media career. One of the reasons we love having Ernie here is that we know he cares deeply about our city. Um, he cares deeply about the Christophers. That's why he does this year after year. Um, and he's recognized as ambassador of goodwill, serving as a champion for promoting more positive news. And he does that in a industry that is dominated, of course, by money. And it's not easy to try to get good news and good values when money like, leads. And Ernie knows this very well, but we're grateful that he does it in, in a very effective way. So Ernie Nastas, thank you, and God bless you. Welcome. Father Jonathan, thank you so much. Kind words, I really appreciate that. And every year you're getting younger and younger. Doesn't he look terrific? He looks fabulous. Round of applause for Father Jonathan. I like to get the energy up. I, l I love this. Um, I was on the phone earlier tonight with Father John Couture, who was with the Christophers for years. Uh, he did his television program, and he brought me into this wonderful organization. I can't believe you mentioned the 69th Annual Awards. And I said, Father John, I said, how long have I been doing this? He said, well, Ernie, I'm calculating here. And he said, I'll bet you it's been 30 years. I said, I can't believe, is it 30 years? 30 years, I'm only 45. I mean, how did that happen? I don't get it. But I know one thing that I get. This is a great, great organization. Beautiful people. Um, I don't have to tell you, now more than ever, we need class. We need elegance. We need quality. We need things that are meaningful, and things that make us feel good about ourselves. I got off the air tonight. I had done a nice five-minute interview with First Lady Shirlene McRae. And she was talking about this weekend. 
uh, being a faith for mental health. And she'll be speaking, and there are organizations that are all part of this. And she'll be at a mosque, she'll be at a synagogue, she'll be at St. Patrick's Cathedral, talking about, you know, doing things to help people, as you pointed out. And, and that's the important thing. One time I read a great line that said, don't strive for success, strive for significance. Why are we here? Why do we do what we do? What gift have we been given? What can we do with that? How can we please God? And I know that we all have that sense of feeling about our faith and our spirituality. And that's a very big part of my life. So I'm, I'm happy to be here tonight and happy to be part of a, a great organization. We're gonna have a bunch of awards tonight, great honorees. But I wanna begin by introducing a, a dear friend, a guy who's been around for a long time. He's gonna present the winners of our Books for Adults category. He's one of the cities, and I'm telling you, I know, one of the hardest working and most talented reporters in this town. Tony Aiello began his career at TV stations in Milwaukee and Nashville before eventually spending five years at WNBC TV here in New York. Since 2002, he's been given CBS coverage, um, going on covering all kinds of stories that New Yorkers talk about. We worked together for a couple of years and we had a great time, Tony. In addition, Tony serves as board secretary for the Westchester Philharmonic, devotes much of his time to charities like the Food Bank for Westchester. Nice job. And just last month, the group Arts Westchester honored Tony with their Voice of the Arts Award for his longtime commitment to making sure the arts are accessible to everyone. It's a pleasure, it's a joy to welcome right now Tony Aiello as our guest for the night. Go for it, buddy, it's all yours. Thank you so much. And they invite me, uh, not because my wife works at Sirius XM and runs the Catholic Channel, but it doesn't hurt. As I, I think I mentioned last year, Ernie, my wife has had a very, my, my wife Liz, who un, wanted to come tonight but couldn't be here, has had a very interesting career at Sirius XM. She started out by working for Howard Stern, then she went to work for Martha Stewart, and now she's with Cardinal Dolan and the Catholic Channel. And I like to say she loves two out of the three. I'm not gonna tell you which two. We have such a diverse and distinguished group of winners tonight, and it's my pleasure to give the book award to, I think everyone in this room would agree, probably one of the most distinguished authors America has ever produced. And it's, I'm, I'm looking forward to Ken accepting his Lifetime Achievement Award, and I hope he says a few words about David McCullough, because Ken Burns and David McCullough have been working together for more than 40 years on various projects. Uh, David McCullough was the voice of the Civil War series, and Ken also, um, one of his first big splashes in the documentary field was The Great Bridge, which is a great book. If you ever want to read a great book about New York City, read The Great Bridge by David McCullough. David is being honored for The American Spirit, published by Simon & Schuster. David McCullough's love of history comes alive in this collection of his best speeches. These speeches celebrate the values and the ideals that have shaped the United States for the better and which should still inspire and guide us today. This acclaimed historian looks back at the political leaders and ordinary citizens who, despite their failings, helped establish an American spirit grounded in character, conscious, kindness, and perseverance. And with a sense of hope, McCullough reminds us of the high aspirations that inspired our founders and the importance of history as an aid to navigation in such troubled, uncertain times. David will have to find room on his shelf for his Christopher Award. He can put it next to his Pulitzer, his National Book Award, and perhaps even his Presidential Medal of Freedom, which is the highest civilian honor America can bestow. Did I say his Pulitzer? He actually has two Pulitzers. And now he has a Christopher, accepting for author David McCullough is his editor, editor Bob Bender. Bob. Tonight, the Christophers honored to present a book award to The Choice by Dr. Edith Eva Eager, published by Scribner, Simon & Schuster. Though her parents were killed in the gas chambers of Auschwitz, Hungarian native Edith Eager survived the Holocaust 
in part because of an encounter with Nazi Dr. Joseph Mengele. She eventually built a successful life and career in the United States, but she remained haunted by survivor's guilt and the trauma that she experienced as a teenager. In The Choice, Dr. Eager recounts her darkest days, her quest for self-forgiveness, and the ways in which she uses her struggles to heal others in her work as a psychologist. In the end, she reminds readers, we can't choose to vanquish the dark, but we can choose to kindle the light. And that is a Christopher's sentiment, if ever I've heard one. Accepting for Dr. Eager is the vice president and associate publisher of Scribner, Roz LaPelle. Our next book award goes to Convicted by Jamil McGee and Andrew Collins with Mark Tabb, published by Waterbrook Penguin Random House. Jamil McGee spent four years in prison for a crime he did not commit, and he was filled with rage at Andrew Collins, the corrupt cop whose lies had put him there. But Collins' crimes eventually landed him in jail as well. He considered suicide but chose to turn his life around instead working for a nonprofit upon his release. And that's where he ran into Jamil McGee again. Though the situation was rife for revenge, both men had found the Lord in prison. Collins apologized to McGee, and McGee forgave him. Today, the two men, who by all accounts should be bitter enemies, are dear friends who share their story of forgiveness and redemption in the hopes of creating a kinder world. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a round of applause for the co-authors of Convicted, Jamil McGee and Andrew Collins. Congratulations. Our next award goes to Dorothy Day, The World Will Be Saved by Beauty, by Kate Hennessy, published by Scribner, Simon & Schuster. Dorothy Day's restless spirit found its purpose in 1933, when she co-founded the Catholic Worker Movement, which radically embraced the church's mission to serve the poorest of the poor. This in-depth biography, written by Day's granddaughter, explores the work that has made Dorothy Day a candidate for sainthood, but it also delves into her fallible humanity as she balances her commitment to social justice with being a good mother to her daughter. Above all, Dorothy Day loved God and loved people. Her legacy affirms that acts of sacrifice and mercy contain a beauty that can help save the world. And we're pleased to have with us tonight the granddaughter of Dorothy Day, author Kate Hennessy. Congratulations, Kate. Our next award goes to I'll Push You by Patrick Gray and Justin Skisuk, published by Tyndale House Publishers. Due to a progressive neuromuscular disease, Justin Skisuk has lost the use of his arms and legs and now relies on a wheelchair. But when he suggested to his best friend Patrick Gray that they embark on the 500-mile Camino de Santiago pilgrimage through the mountains of northern Spain, Patrick simply responded, I'll push you. The two men endured physical struggles in their journey, but they also reaped spiritual fruits, including a new view of God, community, and the kindness of strangers. This inspiring memoir teaches us about pushing past our limits with a little help from our friends. Patrick and Justin send their regrets at not being able to attend, 
so we accept this award on their behalf with a nice round of applause. And finally, in the Book for Adult category, Redeeming Ruth by Meadow Rue Merrill, published by Hendrickson Publishers. Meadow Rue Merrill took her trust in God to new heights when she and her husband decided to adopt a 16-month-old Ugandan orphan named Ruth. The little girl was in the United States receiving medical treatment for severe cerebral palsy, but her smile and sense of joy capture Meadow's heart. Redeeming Ruth follows the Merrills across the world as they face challenges in the adoption process, and it takes us inside their home as they welcome Ruth into their family. Though an unexpected tragedy changes their lives, Meadow takes comfort in her faith, stating, everything life takes, love restores. We're pleased to have with us author Meadow Rue Merrill. It's been a pleasure to be part of the Christopher's Awards tonight. Congratulations again to tonight's winning authors. And please note that a number of our winning books are included in the gift bags you'll be receiving when you leave tonight. Enjoy the swag. Thank you.